the full blown adult diaper is way more comfortable. So I may actually go purchase some more of those before because this only came with one. Hey y'all, it's Amy from the Harris Homestead and today I want to share with y'all what I have prepared for our home birth. We are planning a home water birth and I'm about 35 weeks pregnant at the time of this recording. If you're new to my channel, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. I post new videos each week on our natural lifestyle, our home renovations, and then currently I'm sharing a lot about our natural childbirth and natural baby products for when this baby is born. We are planning a water birth, so it will be actually in this room. This is a smaller room right off of our bedroom. We're under home renovations, so this will eventually be our master bedroom and bathroom. But right now, it's just kind of an empty room we're gonna use for the birth room. To start, I have my birth ball. I used this so much during my first hospital birth. It's great for doing hip circles, getting your body in the proper position to help baby move down. So great to lean over, kind of like this, if you're having any sort of back labor pains. Thankfully, I didn't have any with my first birth, but you never know. So I have this ready, and um, I'm sure I'll be using it a lot in the early, early stages of labor before I get into the birth pool. So a little backstory, I have one son, he is about to be one and a half, so he was born in the hospital. It was a forced induction at a little over 41 weeks. It was a really, really long labor. I fully believe my body was not ready to have him just yet, but it was kind of forced by my doctors. So I'm really excited to have this home birth and a midwife who totally respects that babies can pick their own birthday and we're just praying that all goes well. I have two tubs here. The first one is gonna be for when I first go into labor and throughout labor, and then the second one is gonna be more for postpartum and items for the baby once she arrives. So in the first tub, we have all of our water birth supplies. As soon as the midwife comes, she will be bringing the birth tub and setting it up. Actually, in this exact spot where I'm sitting, we'll go ahead and have everything out ready for the birth tub to set up. Well, my husband will. So under it will have a drop cloth. This is just a basic drop cloth that came in the birth kit that she requested. So that will go under the birth pool. Then we also have the birth tub liner. Since she brings the birth pool with her, we have to have a sanitary liner. So this will go inside the pool that she brings. Thankfully, I didn't have to purchase a separate pool. Then we have our water hose. So as I was go, talking about what I was gonna fill, my husband asked, did you buy an extra water hose? This is like the camper uh, lead-free drinking water hose. And he was like, we have one of those. We have an extra one for our camper. So if you are thinking about a home birth, check around, you may can find this cheaper. I just threw it in the birth kit. I think it was an extra $18 to add on. But I have read that you can find these a little cheaper on Amazon and at Walmart. And if I had known, I knew my husband said we had one free here, but oh well, now we have an extra one. So this will connect from our bathroom right here and we'll fill up the birth pool. I also have the adapter that came with it so that it can hook onto our bathroom faucet. I'll probably go ahead and hook this on the next couple of weeks so everything's ready to go. Then we have a net just for if any nasties get out in the water, we can easily dip those out as the baby is being born. This is actually a mattress protector for my bed. So the way the midwife has us to make our bed is we'll have a our normal set of sheets on the bottom. We'll put the mat mattress protector on top. And then she suggests putting like a flannel or thicker blanket on top of this for extra comfort. And then an older sheet on top of that. So I do have some older sheets in our bedroom right now, but this will go basically on top of our nicer set of sheets to help protect our sheets. And after the baby's born, everything will be stripped off and we'll have a nice fresh set of sheets. So that will actually be going into the bedroom after I film this video. Then we have a lot of the supplies for the midwives. We have gloves or sterile gloves that will be used for most, um, most likely cervical checks. She came in a pack of I think about eight. I know that she does not do that many cervical checks unless they're requested, so we probably will not use all of these, but it came in the kit. There is also these iodine scrubbers so that if um, she needs to sterilize anything on my skin, she can just easily wipe with these. There are four of these in the kit. This is a kit that my midwife uh, pre-selects on a website and then just sends us the link and we go through and purchase the kit and then any add-ons we needed. So I did have to add the add-ons for our water birth. And then we have some olive oil for during labor to help prevent any tearing if needed. And then Ziploc bags. She requested four gallon size Ziploc bags in the um, list she gave me. I'm not exactly sure what those are for, but 
she requested them, so they're in here. And then this is also for our bed, these just protective covers. There's about six or eight of these that came in the birth kit. So those are all of the supplies for pre-labor and during labor. So we will move on to our post-labor and postpartum time and the products for baby once she gets here. So I have a whole nother tub. I just figured it was easier to keep everything separated. First of all, we have this little bag. This has like the cord clamp in there, some swabs, the little baby hat, gauze pads for whatever. And then this was the most random item, straws. I'm gonna have to ask my midwife what these are for, but the birth kit had on there six straws. So that was kind of an odd request, but here they are. Cotton swabs, cotton balls, hydrogen peroxide, thermometer in case we need any checks for me or baby. I'm actually gonna have to get a second thermometer. I only had one right now. We have to get the probe covers, but with everything going on in our world right, world right now, it's very difficult to find those probe covers for thermometers. Lots of pads. I'm actually going to make a pad sickle recipe with some natural herbs and um, a remedy that my midwife suggested to me. So I have a whole nother box of these. I'm gonna make some pad sickles to keep in the freezer for the postpartum time. The peri bottle, I've heard these are amazing. I didn't use it on my first birth, but maybe I'll need it this time. The syringe, we actually got the brown syringe from the hospital. If anybody has had luck with these blue syringes, please let me know. We um, purchased a few of these when we thought we lost our brown bulb syringe, and the blue ones just don't work nearly as good as the brown bulb syringes that you get from the hospital. So hopefully we never lose our brown one because this kit did not come with one of the brown ones. And then we have lots of extra extra absorbency pads for like, I guess, right after labor. And then it actually only came with one of our lovely adult diapers. I may look into getting some more of these. I feel like these are a lot better than the ones I had at the hospital. They were those really thin gauzy material and they were not comfortable at all. And I read a lot of home births moms talk about the full blown adult diaper is way more comfortable. So I may actually go purchase some more of those before because this only came with one, which I guess will be right after labor. Then we have the footprint stamp kit. So all of that's in here to do baby's footprints. I'm gonna keep this sealed up so we don't get any ink anywhere. We have her birth certificate to fill out. Actually an add-on, I read, did some research on it. It's called After Ease. So my midwife kind of explained to me that each subsequent pregnancy after your first, you have worse uterine cramping after the baby is born. I was thinking back, I don't really remember any with my first son, but she told me that since this is my second birth, that I'll probably have a little bit more this time and it'll probably be more noticeable. This is a natural remedy that she recommended I add on to the birth kit that is amazing for helping the uterus contract and not feeling so much pain during that. Over here, I have a whole little um, changing table of a few things. So on top, I have uh, all of the brown bags that have to be sterilized. So this is includes all the old towels that they will use to wipe baby. So we want that to be sterile, even though we're in our own home and not in a Jeremy hospital, we still want to, everything to be sterile for safety purposes. So there's two bags of old towels and some receiving blankets. The second bag is all of the products that will be for baby as soon as she is born. So it's a couple of old receiving blankets to wipe her off and wrap her in. Her first little outfit, some extra caps, a diaper, and then at the very bottom there's some nicer receiving blankets. Final bag is some toilet paper. So that is in case my water breaks prior to me going into labor. I'm not supposed to leave my home and not use public restrooms. So I do have some sterile toilet paper for that reason for after water breaks. There's also a heating pad over there and then all of our newborn diapers, some extra newborn clothes, and then you'll see some of those diapers are my son. He is still in cloth diaper, so all of his diapers are over there as well. But over in this corner, I have my essential oils and a few of the essential oils I've chosen to use during labor. I'm also gonna check with my doula from my first birth and see which one she recommends, but these are the few that I've researched myself and plan to use during labor. So we have clary sage and rosemary. I've read those are great during labor to help with contractions and soothe our mind. Just chose to have on hand was lemon. I just love how uplifting lemon is and just that fresh um, smell. So I'm gonna have that diffusing during labor. Also have my chapstick. My lips were so chapped during my first birth. I remember constantly asking my husband to find my chapstick. So I have two, two tubes of chapstick over here with my essential oils in that little area. In this closet that I have um, right beside where the birth pool will be 
are all of my labor snacks. So I'm very excited that during this birth, I won't be restricted to eating. The hospital is so picky about you eating during labor, just in case you have to go into an emergency C-section. But with a midwife and a home birth, I can eat what I want as I wish. I remember not being extremely hungry during my first labor and some of the foods that I normally love just kind of did not taste very well. So right now I just have some peanut butter and rice cakes to get some quick energy and some coconut water for the electrolytes. I also have some Go Macro bars. This may be more or less for the postpartum time. It's a great filling meal if I need it. I'll also be making some frozen ice cubes of some teas and some play bread recipes. Just to keep your energy up during labor. It could possibly be very long. My first birth was about a 72 hour labor. So we hope that it's not that long, but we're definitely gonna have things on hand to keep my energy up and hopefully sustain me through the entire labor. This ottoman was requested by my husband to keep in here. So he will have somewhere to sit when he is helping assist me with counter pressure and all of the things that husbands do for us during labor. I mentioned in a previous video, I've been listening to podcasts, uh, Heavenly Welcome. Well, I've listened to every podcast she's made, so I'm now out of podcasts to listen to. So now I'm just re-listening to all her podcasts. But she strongly suggests um, having bird scriptures in your room so you can constantly have something positive to focus on to keep your mind in the right place. So I have handpicked a few of my favorite verses pertaining to this labor and I've hung them around the room strategically where I will see them during the birth. So I have several over here by the window and then a couple over here by the table. That is about it for all of our home birth labor preparation. Most of this came from the birth kit my midwife requested. So if you are planning a home birth, your midwife will have special supplies requested. So definitely need to follow whatever they recommend. Things like this hose, I probably could have found this cheaper. I just threw it in with the birth kit because it was convenient. But if you are looking to keep this more budget friendly and I have to spend a lot of extra money on all of your home birth supplies, definitely check around for the extra add-ons that don't come in the kit. So I hope I have kind of given you some insight on what a home birth preparation looks like. We'll be sharing a full video on how our home birth goes and our birth story after she arrives. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thank y'all so much for watching.